Yep. So who are we? VanguardK9.com. So I get a lot of questions, asked all the time about building drive for puppies. And in a minute, I'm going to give you all the information that some of you guys may find useful to your dog training. So I'm going to give it about three or four minutes. And when I get about 15 people on here, at least 15 people, I'm going to tell you everything that you dog trainers would like to know about building prey drive. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be informative. And you're going to get success with your dog training when I give you this information. So you guys hold for one second. And I'm going to get this going for you. By the way, just that Vanguard K9 decal, they go on the shirts. So if you want you a Vanguard K9 shirt or Vanguardian shirt or Telemade shirt, you let me know. And I'll make sure I get that shirt to you in a matter of days. I want all of my Vanguardians out there to know that. I make videos so that each one of you can be successful with your dogs or your puppy or with your training team. I don't make videos so that you don't be successful. I'm, I'm not trying to make money off you so for dog training, so I want to give you everything. Let's see what we have here. I do have to schedule my dog for him to bark at him do I have to oh, I need my glasses where's my glasses well let's assume that you're asking what do you need to do to get your dog to bark at humans okay listen to this dogs will naturally bark to protect their property. Sometimes they're human friends. It's a natural instinct for dogs to become vocal. You have to forgive me, I have a little bit of sinus when you cut this thing off. So imagine at nighttime, isn't it when your dog bark the most? Of course. Then later on he begins to get confident when he's barking at night, when he hear all these strange sounds and noises, he begin to do it in the daytime. If you want your dog to bark at somebody, everything has to be premeditated. Dog training is common sense. So when I say common sense, if we know your dog bark, when somebody pulls up in the yard, we put your dog on a chain so that no one get harmed. And... You have that person, you you already premeditated what you what you guys are gonna do. The dog's on the chain or in the kennel, the person come walking up sneaky, he barks, and you 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 mark it, you praise, you do it one or two times and let it go. I find that most people are trying to get success overnight, and you don't have to try to get success overnight. We have a lifetime to shaping these behaviors. You can train a dog uh, four times a day, four different times a day for a whole week or two, and then you leave the dog alone and he come back three weeks later and he got it. So you take your time and to get your dog to bark at humans. Basically, you bring, you put him in a setting where he does it naturally instead of taking him somewhere and forcing it on him. Because when you force that behavior on the dog, the reason he's feeling forced is because you don't have a clear line of communication. So the more games you play with your dog, when you sit down and try to get into his head and figure out what makes him bark, you, you work from that and you build on that. Let's get the next person up here. I'm a fan of yours and I love your dogs. Thank you. Thank you. When I breed dogs, I breed these dogs 
for me. What happened is guys like you see the talent that I display uh, in training and you see what the dog display in training. Then I sell those dogs because, you know, I do. Uh, I am a business and I'm, I do provide dogs for people that are looking for good dogs. So I'm not able to keep those dogs. And so then I in this cycle just keep happening. So, you know, I love the dogs just as much as you love them. I'm trying to breed good dogs because um, I need a good dog. And if if I have a litter of seven, then we we all have good dogs. So all of for you six and my one, you all have the same genetics. And so now we all have good dogs. What's the next one? Mm. Love the information. An outstanding job. I appreciate you being out here on YouTube, sharing your information. Be blessed, bro. Thank you, Isaac. Let me tell you something, Isaac. Forgive me, I have sinus. I always have allergies. That's why you see me rubbing my eyes and nose all the time. Um, let You know why I put this information out here on YouTube? And it's, it's, it's going to sound shocking. I've, I've been training animals, not just dogs, my entire life. And when I came to Jacksonville, I love dogs. And I went anywhere around the world to look at dogs and to watch people train. At that time, I was probably one of the few uh, people of color that went to Shits and dog training events. Um, when they started Mondo Ring here and the, with the River City Ringers and the uh, French Ring and all these different uh, disciplines. I've been around since way before dog training. They had disciplines, but when they had the American Street Ring, I would go there and it was uh, uh, Pat and Rudy and myself and no other people of color. And it was very hard getting information from people in dogs. You'll find that in dogs, they play a lot of politics. And these sporting events and these, these other dog breeders, this is how it goes. This is the king at the dog event who breeds dogs. They're not going to give you their good dog unless they're controlling you and the dog with some type of paperwork. And they're not gonna give you a good dog so you can be better than them and they're not gonna give you information. That's how it was at one time. And some people still experience that. How can we learn? How can we progress? How can we go further? Because dog training is not about me. It's not about this group, this group over here. It's not about them against each other. It's about all of us getting together. And what I know, what you know, what someone else know, we all put our talent to make this one dog be great. And that's what we're supposed to do, share information and try to make these animals great. Because if we're uh, people who love animals, uh, uh, we should all try to make an animal great because when a dog's trained, you can take him everywhere. We desire him, we love him. And that's what makes us keep him and take care of him and spend money in him forever. But I give the information because I didn't get that information. I had to learn a lot of things, learn as you go. And I just want to make it easy and not try to sound all politically correct and using big words and things. Probably that I can't even say anyway. You know, but, and, uh, and I put that out for you guys. So thank you, Isaac, for telling me I'm doing an outstanding job. I don't know if that's what I'm doing. I'm just doing what I know how to do. And. And hope that some of you get out here and watch it. Okay. Forgive me. I can't see well. I'm an old man. I'm 47 years old. Uh, do you think American bullies can do protection? I, that wouldn't be fair for me to answer, um, Queen of Hearts. And I done saw some of your videos, Queen of Heart Kennels. I see you're really trying to get out there. Okay. I, you got your bullies. Well, 
I would be fair for me to answer because I don't own bullies and all the guys that I see with bullies are not trying to train their bullies. They just try to make them look good. Um, but any animal can be trained. Let me say that again before I say this. Every animal can be trained. But what I breed are dogs that come from 70 the 60 generations or more certified certificate dogs. It's a genetic code of certain behaviors we're trying to lock to make them continue to do this obsessive behavior to work. Now, in bullies, if you begin to breed dogs for looks and you're not training that dog, you, you follow me, Miss Queen of Hearts, Queen of Heart Kennels? If you're not training that dog, Taking it to PetSmart, anywhere, anybody that'll help you, anybody to help you, everybody that'll help you. And then you find out how hard it was to train this dog, how long it took him to catch concept. Uh, do they bond with you quick? Do they recover? And then you start breeding the ones that are more obedient, more loyal, ones that have more determination, because bulldogs will go a mile just like any other working dog. If you redirect, and channel what they want to do or what they were bred for to do and to ensure you can get them to train. So what is their full genetic potential? Because you can only train a dog to its full genetic potential. I said all that to say that to you. So it's not about what I think. It's about what you will find out and know. I don't own bullies. They're dogs. They can be trained. Pit bulls are some of the most loyal dogs in the world. I had hundreds of them way before I got into Dutch Shepherds. So you get out there and you train those dogs and you find out which ones are the best and you keep putting them together and try to sustain your look, Your you know, because you know bullies are bred for what they look like. And you'll end up with the best bullies in the country right here in America. And then next day they'll be saying Queen of Hearts got bullies that are trained and um, that are desired for their looks as well. Thank you for watching and share my videos and put them on your page and subscribe and get your friends who are into dogs and training to subscribe and I'll start talking about bullies for you. And I'll start trying to find some bullies and train them and see what we can find out about bloodlines and the bullies. Let's see, we got... Uh, let's see, Rob G. Rob G. What is the best way to teach a dog to let go from a bite? One of my American Bulldogs I now have doing bite part great, but have a lot of trouble getting him to let go once on. Okay, I got you. Rob, that's pretty much all of these dogs who won't let go once once they get in it. So let me explain that to you. And think about this concept because you guys are dog handlers and you're starting your career as dog trainers while you're being breeders or just training. You know, let's, let's stay on common sense right here, Rob. Now think about what I'm saying to you. You and I are together. You invite me to your house and these people – um, start fighting. How easy is it going to be for you and I to break up two people who don't know each other or who are in an aggressive manner? It's very hard. Look at that with the dog. It's a fight. It's fighting the man. Okay, now watch. It's not hard to teach him to let go we just have to find ways of conditioning him to let go with other games. Like, for instance, you playing tug with him. You throw, uh, 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 you have the same tug in your other hand. And while he's tugging that, all of a sudden you stop the, the fight. And then you wiggle this other tug and say, let loose or let go or out. And as soon as he come out, you throw the other toy and he go after it. And then you... You do that again, and you throw the other toy, and you give him. So now you condition him to let go with that word that you're using. And you're going to use that same word in the fight. Now, I'm sure the fight is a lot more hype. And before you go to compulsion, 
you always want to stop because sometimes the man could be moving and he's still fighting. So that's why you say stand still, stop fighting the dog. You hear, those, you hear those guys say that in sports and the police. And if you stand still, the prey is no longer active. There's no fight. Now you wiggle that toy in front of him. And, and, and after a while, the light bulb effect could go off where he's, he's been playing those other games with you where you, had him to let go when you bring out another toy. So the concept you want to create is he'll get the bite if he let go another uh, item that's just as fun, which is his favorite toy that you don't pull out all the time. So if you don't get sloppy, the dog will begin to believe in you because letting go is an obedience command. And so you want to kind of create an obedience command within letting go and the dog will associate that. And I, I'm sure it's, it's much harder than that sometimes, but get the person to stop moving, condition the dog to let go with playing other games around the house, play other games, and, this, and the dog will eventually associate that. And if that be, still becomes a problem, we'll address that again where you are in another live chat. Let's see. I hope that helped you, Raji. You got uh, Moss. Can't pronounce your first name. I have a German Shepherd mix with a pit bull. Will should I train her? Well, you asking well should I train her? Yeah, you should train your dog. If a dog is trained, that makes the dog desired by everybody in the family. Everywhere you go, people admire that so much control. Care and control, animal care and control. You can con contain and control and manipulate behaviors to making it seem like this is a well-behaved dog and everybody don't mind that dog coming to their house. You dang right. You better train it. That's what makes you love a dog. That's what you love to see the dog do those great things. And so, yeah, train your dog. Um, let's see who else we got up here. When are you having the next set of puppies? I just breed when they come in heat. We're a security investigation agency. Sometimes we use the dog to work. And you know, if the dog come in heat and, uh, and people ask them about litters, and I'll breed the dog and we just have litters. I, I can't anticipate when they come in heat. You know, dogs come in heat. Some come in heat every three, four months, five, six months, once a year, mainly for me, for each dog. Um, just follow the website, www.vanguardk9.com. Yep, vanguardk9.com. And watch YouTube. And normally when you see a dog on YouTube, it's for sale. That's because everybody picked all the other puppies, and that's the dog that I have left. So, shoot, I have to train it to make it seem desirable because it's getting older, and it's hard to place it. So I go to training it and hopes that somebody will give it a good home. The next person. Oh, you know I got bad eyes. Okay, Queen said, I feel what you're saying. Many people look good. Only breed for looks. I breed good temperament and to produce protective look come last. Okay, well, that sounds like what it's about. It's about working ability and looks come last. Gee, amazing information. I can't find this anywhere else in the world. Thanks for the help. I'll be subscribed. Yeah, I hope you do subscribe. Hurry up. Click that button. <laughs> Have your friends subscribe so I can keep making videos. Uh, what? Oh, you hate for what? You hate for what? That's your name? They named you you hate for what? <laughs> Let's see. How can I train my German Shepherd protection work? Uh-oh, he done jump. How can I train my German Shepherd? Where did that go? You hate for what? How can I train my German Shepherd protection work by myself without a decoy, or is it even possible? I'll tell you what you can do. See, my methods are some similar to a lot of dog trainers out there, yes. But they're a little bit different. Let me tell you why. Because I'm 
I've always been in the same situation you're in. Now, to advance train a dog, you need help. There are different things you, you, you're going to need help on. But you can do certain common sense, everyday, logical things to get you there. So when it comes to protection, the concept that the bad guy is the one you attack, you're going to have to get somebody. Now, to, to build grips, to build grips, to build prey drive, you can do all that yourself. You can start the dog off, the dog tied up, and you see on those videos, I'm wiggling the little prey item. I'm imprinting the trigger word and the action to launch out, grab, bite. Now, I grab it, tug it. Up, down, it's a fight. It's a prey game now. First, you got to think that's a prey. So now I'm shaping a behavior to bite him. That's the, that's the basic of protection work. Then you see my son and other people holding it, and I come out, and they come out of nowhere, and I put the trigger word. I'm reinforcing that trigger word. I'm praising for that trigger word. And they learning to bark and go out again and going further for distance. And biting. So, y'all, I'm shaping that behavior for protection work. When it comes to the true aggression and civil aggression, no, hell no, you can't put a sleeve on and teach your dog to bite you. You're going to need help. But to get the dog to learn how to bark and alert and go out and bite and play the game and build up grips through uh, rebiting using tug toys and the things that I create here. I, I make all of those things. I make sleeves. I make tug toys, all kind of stuff. That's what you do, the foundation of getting the dog for protection. So you can do limited, the, 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 I would say the, uh, the groundwork, the foundation and communication between your dog to get a clear understanding of what bite, the word bite means and the action to run out and then the aggression, you can do that later on in life. You can even have people come by the gate and agitate the dog or the, and you go out there and praise the dog for that and then the concept of playing the prey game, the fight game, the trigger off the one day, somebody stick their arm across the gate. Yeah, yeah, you might can. It's different kind of ways. So it's all kind of things you have to do. And in order for me to give you a fair answer, uh, how, if you can finish it, no, I don't think so. You know, I have to see that because me seeing things is how I read animals. But just to tell you something, it will be unfair to you and the dog how far you go and, and what you got. So you hate for what? That's the answer. You hate for what? What? <laughs> you hate for what? What you hate for, Queen of Hearts? Is, you, is that your friend? <laughs> you hate for what? Oh, that's funny, boss. How you get her to be yard aggressive without a on and off switch? That should be genetically natural when the dog in the yard and people not coming up there. If you're not letting everybody pet the dog every day, and after a while, the dog, once the dog in the yard a year or two, some months, and she realized that's her house. Then she comes protective about her property because dogs and all animals do that in the wild, lions, monkeys. You watch the uh, National Geographic and let another uh, lion come on the pride. He's going to get killed. Let another gorilla come in the pride. He's going to get killed. Dogs, it's all the same. Eventually, your dog will do that. And it should be genetics. And if the genetics not right or, or You've over socialized the dog and made everybody a hot dog machine that walked by in a petting zoo. Then don't you don't expect that. Don't expect that. So I'm not going to tell you a lot to give you no high expectations, but I believe that eventually the dog going to bark and you waiting for the moment. And the best time to get the aggression out is at nighttime. Let a dog outside, put it on a long cable at night and tie it somewhere where it can't get tangled up. And I guarantee you, when them raccoons and them rats come out, they're going to start barking. I don't know where you live at, if you're able to do that, but you've got to set up, play, you got to premeditate, you know, premeditate these things to set it up. Uh, Moss, okay, let's see. Christopher Stark, Henry Tractor, Christopher Starks. Is it hard to find 
decoys for personal protection. Can I train my two-year-old German Shepherd without using a decoy? Did we answer that one? Yeah, well, it ain't hard to find a decoy. If they want to help you, they just want to get paid or if you trading off work. And no matter how old the dog is, working dogs, dogs are perceptive to learning at any age. It's just that the older they are, if you didn't raise it, somebody put stuff in his head, now you got to fix those issues. Puppies, it's like starting from scratch without nothing in their head. So now you can shake that and build it from the ground up. And by the time you get two years old, it's, it's a pro. So, but you can take train any dog if it got the right genetics and the dog got the right character and was raised right. You know, only you know that when you see your dog, take it for all of you out there. If you really want to know what your dog made of and you want to know how your dog act by yourself, you and your dog find a dog trail, find a nature trail and get a long line and a regular leash and a backpack and some water and some snacks and go walking in the woods with your dog on a, on a nature trail. Everything you want to see how that dog act where he don't have no distractions and people coming out of the woods every now and then, the way it acts when it sees things, the log, the jumping lizards, the, 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 the old tires, whatever in them woods, you're going to find out and you're going to build a relationship with your dog and you can figure out what's going on in his head to fix it. Don't do it around a bunch of distractions and all that other stuff. I'm definitely going to share your videos. Help me to be better, etc. You got it. I'm helping all of y'all. That's what I'm here for. No problem, Queen. It's the Aaron Naylor. How do I build a fence drive in my East German Shepherd? He has prey drive, but not much defense drive, and his barking isn't all the way there. Now, East German, East German. Now, East German, German Shepherds, let me tell you something. If, I, if I'm not mistaken, because I bred German Shepherds for a while, I bought a few, bunch of them. I'm a German Shepherd man at heart. I don't raise them because they're a little too slow for me. They shed a lot. And then by the time you get them trained at five years, going down here a little bit. Not so for all of them. But East German, if I'm not mistaken, it's different from West German. West German, a little bit more smaller. They move around. East German, big bone, stocky dogs. I think that's just more New Berlin. They don't crank up till they're four years old. I promise you, man, I had some dogs from East German bloodline. And don't quote me on that and say, I don't know what I'm talking about, you, you guys. But if I'm not mistaken, uh, East German German Shepherd is real civil. It'll kill you. But they don't show you none of those signs you're looking for until it's four years old. That's a long time to be waiting for a dog. They're like these old pit bulls that were called Mauler dogs. They're not going to start up and show you nothing they're made of until they're four years old as far as that civil. Now, obedience and all that other stuff, you can get that out of them. But to show you that they tough and hard, they take a while. But when they do, they, they nasty. They mean, man. They, they dirty. They're East German, German Shepherd. And that defense is going to come out four years old. Let somebody come at nighttime. I keep saying that to every last one of y'all. Put a dog on a tie. If you have a big yard, I don't know if some of you guys live in the city. I live in the south. You hear that southern, southern swing, slang. I'm, I'm hood. I'm hood. I'm from the south. It's everybody. It's all good. We don't, it's, you know, that's what we, how we are in the south. So we live on, you know, lots, lots of land and woods and in Florida. So we tie dogs. You can put a dog on a tie out. In the out in your on your property where it cannot get tangled up and you need to keep going out there and you know let's lose common sense here and I keep saying I'm here to keep you guys and the common sense bring you back down to reality because all of this stuff I'm telling you this information I'm giving you guys you already know you already know this I'm just bringing you back down to reality Put him on the tile side, and at nighttime, dogs do some crazy barking because, hey, man, they don't know what's going on. They can't see nothing. It's heighten. Put him outside. 
Call a buddy on the phone, say, hey, man, watch from the window. Tell him to come walking up with a mask on, whatever you got to do. Tell him don't get too close, but come be at a distance. Start on the dog and run off. Try it every night until it works. Don't push the dog. Don't get on the dog all up close 10, 20 feet, putting pressure on a dog that may cop not can handle it. Some dogs can't handle it. And, and another thing about some of those East German dogs, the sorry is I don't know what. So I hope you got a good one. Naylor. Um, he's 10 months old, by the way. Yeah, well, you got three years and uh two months. I hope it crank up before that. But that's just what I think about some of the East German. Thanks, Mose. Mose says thank thank you. Um let's see. I've been trying to contact you. 904. The website is www.vanguardk9.com. And my phone number is everywhere. 904 is the area code for Florida. 904-450-3339. I ain't hard to find. You can always come to the videos. The videos tell you every time on the videos. Those numbers are correct. I don't know where people say they're wrong. They're probably old videos on old channel at my old office. But that 904-450-3339, you can always text me. If you need something, call me and I'll take care of you. My name, my name only means we as people should stop hate. So why hate when you can love? Yeah, you're right. Love is the only thing that makes life worth living. Hate ain't real. If someone says they hate you, it's all a game. I don't care what nationality you are. It's not real. <laughs>